I was going to talk to you today about, yes, you've guessed it, St. Francis de Sal. Because he famously said that in matters of religious controversy and indeed in matters of spiritual direction and confessions and the whole thing, that it was were better to use a spoonful of honey rather than a barrel full of vinegar. And Francis himself was notoriously gentle, diplomatic, urbane, polished and kindly. He was born in 1567, scion of a noble family, the premier family in the area of Savoy. He was intended for the law and to be a magistrate, studied at Padua, was, I think, taught mostly by Jesuits, the Collège de Clermont in, in Paris. In about 1586, this gifted young man, shy, reserved, courtly in manners, elegant in appearance, had a tremendous crisis. And his crisis arose from his consideration of the Calvinist doctrine of predestination and from the conviction that he himself might be damned. Now, of course, Calvin didn't invent predestination. It's there in St. Augustine. And Calvin always claimed that he was the most faithful follower of Augustine. But the Catholic Church would have would dispute that. He came out of it. It lasted a while. It was a dark night of the soul. He came out of it. That was about 1586. Around 1587, towards the end of 87, he consecrated himself to Our Lady and pretty much had decided to be a priest. The family weren't able to shake this out of him, so they went along with it and he was ordained a priest. He was trained and ordained. And he did a great deal of excellent work as a priest in the service of the Bishop of Geneva. Now, the Bishop of Geneva obviously wasn't living in Geneva because, of course, by then it was the headquarters, if you like, of the, of the Calvinist uh, Protestant movement. He lived at Annecy, about 20 miles outside Geneva. De Salle showed not only great ability as a speaker, he was a lovely speaker, eloquent, nice voice, very effective, but mild and gentle, avoided controversy, focused on the virtues. Maybe some people not a million miles away could learn something from him. And, and this is unusual. He won over many Calvinists. Now, it didn't happen straight away, and it was a long and dispiriting haul for him. But he, he made many conversions among the Calvinists in the area of Geneva. So this was a remarkable man. He went on to be, oh, I think, Auxiliary Bishop of Geneva and then finally Bishop of Geneva in uh, 1602. His work was outstanding as bishop. Needless to say, he also came to the attention of the King of France, uh, who longed to keep him at his court. But de Salle insisted, insofar as one can insist with the king, he insisted that he go back to his, to his diocese. He was a good Tridentine bishop, should be resident in his diocese. And the king was very much at a loss and commented about de Salle that he was an extraordinary man. He said he's learned and devout and a gentleman. And he said, that's a very unusual combination. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that said about the priests of that time. But of course, we have to remember de Salle came from more than money. De Salle came from old money. He came from the nobility. He would have had a certain urbanity and confidence from that background. But the king was hugely taken with him and would have kept him as his court theologian if he could have persuaded de Salle to stay, but de Salle talked him out of it. He died eventually at Annecy in uh, 1622 and went on to become, you hear the way I'm talking here because we don't accept that death is death, he went on to be promoted <laughs> and to become one of the great workers in heaven for the church, having done incredible work on earth. And here's the interesting thing. De Salle did a lot of his work, his apologetics, 
his conversions through conversation, through kindness, through love, through being a genuinely beautiful man. And there's something to be learned there. Now, I think there's time for a Jeremiah. There's times you have to take a stand. But there's also time for a rather gentler approach. And Francis de Sales is probably one of the most appropriate and important role models we could pick in our present situation. He is not the only one, but he is one of the most important. Now, as you may know, he also became an oratorian. He, he founded an oratory and was the provost of this oratory, and pictures of him show him in the Episcopal attire, but with the oratorian collar, which looks rather like a plain modern shirt collar turned down over the top of a cassock. In this, de Salle showed his tremendous love of others, his wish to be surrounded by priests, the priests of an oratory live together, and his earnestness and determination about his own sanctification and that of others. So he was a working saint. He was a saint who became a saint through making others saints. He wasn't, how would you put it, a saint in a bottle. This is a saint who poured himself out as a libation in honour of his creator, in honour of his redeemer, in honour of Jesus Christ. And so we can say today with deep gratitude and deep appreciation, St. Francis de Sales, gentle St. Francis, pray for us.